All right, everyone, this is a new thing I'm gonna try and we'll see how it goes. This is 360, what? You're in my living room. Anyways, a few weeks back, I did a cover of God Only Knows by the Beach Boys, Brian Wilson, and I am so enamored with the architecture of this song. And this may not appeal to everyone, maybe it will, I don't know, is to kind of lift behind the curtain um, harmonically and see what's going on inside this song, which I did anyways because I just wanted to know. These are my, my weird little notes here that show the chords and their function, the role they play. So um, let's just jump into it. Um, the intro does this. Kind of repeats that. So now the first chord is A, but the key is not A, the key is actually E. The first chord is here. And this, it's called the four chord. This movement, we hear that a lot. example. Forget that. Anyways, you hear this, you hear this four, three, two, one kind of movement a lot, but so we're going four, which is the, the A, to E, and we're using an inversion. So instead of playing E in the bass, we play G sharp in the bass, and it's giving it this kind of like moving, unsettled feeling. feel like it resolves even though that's the one that's supposed to be home by Menon that's the one yet it doesn't feel like we're at the one it doesn't feel like we're home when we get to this chord usually goes, that's how it usually resolves, two, two, five, one, oh, are you still there? Yep, you're still there. This thing is, uh, I'm still getting used to this. Just making sure that it's still recording. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so we've got four, three, two, one. It's actually four, one. very classical sounding is the way the melody goes <clears throat> the melody goes up but the bass goes down and then when the bass goes up the melody goes down classical sounding thing to do that. Um, what else is brilliant? This is just the intro. This is so brilliant. Um, this, because we have the first chord being A, our ear doesn't know yet that A isn't the key of the song until we hear this note. That's because this note is the seventh note in the E major scale, but it's not in the A major scale, because otherwise it'd be, it'd be this note, so instead it would be, And 
this scale, these notes, even though they belong to E major, they also belong to A Lydian. This scale has got a very like exotic kind of sound to it, and you hear it in Maria. Or the Simpsons. Anyways, so it's got a like a magical sort of heavenly sound to it right away. bass movement, this note G is not an E major, it's an E minor. So it goes to E minor for like a hot second, and then it goes to the new key, which is A. But instead of going to A, the one, it goes to the four, which is D. But instead of just going to D, it goes to D with a bass note of A. So it sounds like this. Oh, so brilliant. Because it makes, it fakes you out. You think, you think you're going here. That's where it would sound like it was going. But what it does is, oh, it's subtly deceptive. Because it still gives you the A as the bass note, but it's not A major that you're going to. It's actually D, the chord of D, which is in the key of A major. It's so weird. But it's just like, oh, uh, it's like a little bit of um, sleight of hand, like, look over here, but I don't know. It gives you something that is expected, but yet not expected. So now we're the four chord. are built from the notes of A major scale. belongs to the key of E, but really um, it belongs to the key of C minor, and C minor and E major are kind of like relative cousins. E major is the relative major of C minor, C sharp minor, sorry. So it basically belongs to this scale. So now we've transposed from A major to C sharp minor, which is interesting because C sharp minor is a chord that is in A major, but now we've transferred the what would have been the third chord of A major is now the one chord of C sharp minor. Crazy stuff. So here we go. So I may not always love you as long as there are stars above you. What that's doing is that's bringing us into this chord. It could also bring us here. But instead, anyways, this chord leads us into E major. 
So now we are in E major. So we've gone from E major, which is the intro, to A major for just a little bit of the verse. Now back to E major. So I may not always love you as long as there are the stars above you. Now we're back in E major. But instead of going to the one of E major, which is E, we also do the inversion where we play this bass note. Now makes it an inversion because we're flipping the notes, sort of up, we're flipping the chords upside down. So it's doing these all these beautiful uh, diminished chords in here. So we run from the one to what would be the a C diminished. Now diminished, they're magical because they're symmetrical. So C diminished is the same thing as A diminished. Same thing as F sharp diminished, which is the same thing as E flat diminished. And back to E diminished again. Has this transformative quality where it kind of it leads you somewhere. It usually leads you. Uh, where is it leading us? It's leading us to E, back to E. Um, so that's the function it plays. It's really the, like the seven. Let's see acting like E flat diminished, which is the same thing as C diminished, but E flat goes in, or D sharp, I should say, goes into E. So D sharp diminished wants to lead to E. And what a beautiful sound that is. So anyways, we've got the one of E major, which is E, it's inverted, to C diminished leads us back to that same chord. Now we go to this. It's my favorite chord in the whole world. Woo! What is that? Jeez, that is so nice. So that is a... The way I think of it is a... Um, I think of this as a B-flat half-diminished. Or, I think of it as a C-sharp minor with B-flat in the bass. Ah, why am I playing that? Crazy. So this chord, it doesn't belong to really anything. Uh, it kind of wants to lead you back to... So it's deceptive. It goes to it goes to that four chord, the four chord of E major, which is where we started in the first place, and it brings us at full circle. Cool. 
thing too about this is the way the bass moves. That's so important because the bass does this thing, these chromatic movements that have this really smooth melodic quality on their own. Uh, so just with the bass and the melody. I may not always love you as long as there are stars above you. to it where the bass is very intentional it's like counterpoint it's like uh, you know baroque bach that type of thing um so then it goes to this crazy section which is just like kind of out of nowhere it goes um uh, god only knows what i'd be without you then it goes to it goes to this a Seven sharp eleven chord, which is a Lydian chord. So beautiful. So we're really in the key of A uh, mixolydian, I think. Again with the version. Now we're in B minor. Now we've changed keys again to now we're in A major. That's the seven diminished of A major. So if we're in the key of A, one, two, three, four, sharp four, half diminished, which oddly enough usually goes to the four chord deceptively because it wants to go, it wants to go to that E, but it doesn't. It's all about deception, like leading you to think something is going to happen. Your ear is tr is like expecting a certain resolution and it doesn't give it to you but it gives you something that's close and that's enough to keep you going keep you listening and keep the song moving forward so yeah uh let's see now we've changed key it's the same intro, but instead of being in the key of E, we're now in the key of A. Oh, that's why it's so high. Which leads us to the one chord of D, which then becomes the, uh, shoot, where are we now? I hope I'm getting lost. Now we're back in A, which is the original verse chord key. We've got that D chord over A, which is the four. 
chord in A. This song is so twisted, but in the most beautiful and brilliant way. And I'm probably lost. I'm sure I've lost all of you by now. Um, but if nothing else, the takeaway is there's so much under the hood that is intentional, that is really it's classical. This is the kind of stuff you would see, the kind of movements you would see in classical music. But anyways, we're right back where we started, which is that D chord with A in the bass, which is the four chord in A major. I may not always love you. also think of this as a uh, seven diminished of the five chord. Oh, that's too much. Because we're in, we're in E. So the fifth chord is B, and the seventh diminished of that is half diminished. It's this uh, A sharp or B flat. So it makes you it makes you think you're we're going into E. So it makes you think we're going to B major. But not we go. We're staying in E. And then it just does that forever to the end song. God only knows what I'd be without you. God only knows, God only knows. And this is so subtle, last thing. God, God, God only knows. This note is not this note. It's normally da, da, da. We're in the key of E major or A Lydian, which uses this D sharp. But instead, they switch off real quick and go to D, which is... weird God only knows it goes to briefly for a second it goes to a major anyways this is really convoluted I don't know if any of this makes sense but if nothing else just appreciate the brilliance that went into making the song it's so incredible all right let's see if this thing even recorded did it record ah, I think it's still recorded well hope you enjoyed hanging out in my living room for a couple minutes 24 minutes dang um, hope you have a great day and I'll see you all soon.